Welcome to the weekly market update from Signature Wealth Management. I'm Brian Ransom, Research Director from Signature Wealth, and here's what happened in the market this week. The market has continued to fall this week, and we are back at the important support zone established back in September of 2020. This zone marks a minus 26% decline peak to trough. Should this support fail, the next major area of support is the pre-pandemic highs from 2019 which marks a 30% decline peak to trough. The major question is, when is all of this going to end? And that question depends on how long the Fed intends on increasing interest rates. Currently, FOMC expectations put the peak rate at around 4.6% at some point in 2023. Market expectations, at least since the beginning of October, put the peak rate at 4.21% reached at the end of the year. As of today, the market currently expects a peak rate to reach 4.75 to 5% early next year. This would imply the Fed is nearly done increasing rates, but these expectations from the market and the Fed itself are notoriously bad at predicting the actual peak rate. Here are a few key signs the Fed is watching as we enter into the final stages of contraction. First, this inflation crisis has revolved around the imbalance between between the labor market and employers, resulting in a wage price spiral. At the beginning of 2022, job openings, shown here, were at record highs and have only just now started to fall. If job openings continue to fall, then that would be the first sign that the balance between labor and employers has been restored. This would result in disinflation of the average hourly earnings index, which saw high levels of rapid growth prior to April 2022. Only since April has this index started to fall. We need to see a decline and ultimate stabilization of this growth rate to see inflation subside. Ultimately, this may lead to an increase in unemployment down the road. This will probably be the last shoe to drop, and at that point, the market likely already sniffed out capitulation from the Federal Reserve. All of this revolves around the money supply, which is the ultimate cause of systemic inflation. As money supply increases, more dollars are suddenly buying fewer goods, and inflation increases in conjunction. But this is not always a one-for-one -one increase. In fact, there's about a sixth month to a two lag between increases in the money supply and in increases in inflation as the extra dollars work its way through the economy. Fortunately, money supply growth, shown in blue, has been falling steadily for a while now, which should translate into CPI disinflation, shown in purple, in the near future. At that point, the Fed will capitulate. For more information on this topic or a variety of other topics, market updates, financial planning, and wealth management, please visit our blog at signaturewmg.com slash blog. If you like our content, feel free to share it with friends and family. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button.